of us at the office where uh, I'm going to have you stand over here because I think she's going to be, someone wanted to photograph you. Marilene is known as the butterfly lady, and I read an article in a Freeman about her several years ago. She lives up on Bostock Road, and she has wonderful butterfly gardens, which I've seen on the web, but haven't had the pleasure of uh, going to a couple of the um, outings that you have. It was too hot and humid last August, so I stayed at AC. I was kind of... But she's had many documentaries written and done on her, and her life has been dedicated to butterflies, and she requested to be on the agenda tonight for what I think is a very important uh, aspect of it. And I'll turn it over to you, Marilyn. Well, thank you very much, and thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to give you the mic. Oh, okay. Is that all right? Absolutely. Uh, do I have it, and can you hear me clearly? And yes. First, I want to thank everyone um, for allowing me to speak this evening. I'll try not to take up too much time. Um, I'm here, as, as Sylvia so kindly said, I, my life has been inspired by butterflies for 40 years. And um, I'm here because I want us butterflies and bees and all other pollinators to be able to continue to grace our planet and to pollinate our food. And um, in that regard, I'm suggesting a proposal that Olive, um, the people of Olive, make a resolution to protect pollinators. <clears throat> I just returned from the mountains of Mexico <clears throat> last night. I have been, I've been going there for 37 years. I was the first person to find the monarchs overwintering habitats 37 years ago, and I've been going back ever since um, and working to protect the habitats in Mexico, helping to plant over six million trees to protect the place where the monarchs overwinter. And I've seen many changes over the years. Um, 37 years ago, and up until a few years ago, about 300 million monarch butterflies overwintered in the mountains of Mexico. And um, they arrive on the uh, 1st of November. The people on the mountains say, you can't see the sky. You couldn't see the sky for three days. It would be so filled with monarchs. And there they would stay for the winter and mate and fly north in the spring to grace us here in the township of Olive in <laughs> many places over North America. <clears throat> and uh, it's a sacred place on the planet. And I pledged to protect it and I did my best. And uh, as I said, I just returned last night and this year, uh, for the first time, from 300 million, there are only 3 million monarch butterflies. Why has this happened? Uh, there are many reasons, and of course deforestation there, but the major problem seems to be the widespread use of pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides that are killing the bees and the butterflies and the songbirds and all the pollinators. And um, <clears throat> this is a very serious issue. If we do not have pollinators, we do not have 40% of our food. This is not a, a red issue a blue issue. This is, this is a human issue. And I think we all want to do something and, and be part of the solution. And, I, you know, as I said, I worked many years in Mexico to, to help reforest the mountains. And the past few years, I have dedicated myself to saying, we have to save our planet one garden at a time. And now, 
it's, I went to a conference at Cornell uh, in October about gardening in a, in a warming world. Our climate is changing. Monarchs always arrived on the 1st of November. As far as people can remember, that's the Day of the Dead, very special day in Mexico. For the past two years, they've been arriving a week later, never in anyone's memory. They are leaving on their journey north one month earlier. The effects of, of the changing things that are happening on our planet are very evident with our pollinators. And if any of you have followed, you know the problem with the bees have been dying. And they've been, the scientists have linked it to pesticides. So I could go on. I have so many stories to share. And so I thought that um, I would ask the town board and the good people of Olive to do a simple thing. No one is asking for money. Just we pledge. Um, Sean and Bonnie Bigler, who are here tonight, who yeah. helped start the Olive Food Pantry, um, have offered to help set up a website. I don't know how many people live in Olive. What's our population? A little over 5,000 on the census. A little over 5,000. OK. What if we had a website, no cost to the town of Olive, that said, the people of the town of Olive protect pollinators. We, the people of Olive, pledge to protect our pollinators as follows. We pledge not to use herbicides, pesticides, or fungicides. We pledge to plant milkweed and or not cut milkweed since it is the only plant on which monarch butterflies can lay their eggs. We pledge to plant some native flowers, shrubs, and or trees. That's it. And then we challenge other towns. How many, let's say we have a little over 5,000 people in Olive. What if 4,500 people signed this pledge? Yeah, I think it would be great for tourism to be known as one of the most pollinator-friendly townships. Do you know, it might sound, I don't know, maybe funny to some of you, but it's so very important. And when, and when I went to this conference at Cornell, they asked us all to step up. Because if we don't step up now, when are we going to do it after all the pollinators are gone? And if we don't step up for this issue, what is important to all of us and our future and the children? And if we don't do it, who else will? And Olive, I'm honored to live in Olive. I love my gardens. I invite each and every one of you to visit my butterfly gardens next summer. So this is my proposal. And um, I'd be happy to take any questions, or I don't know what the next step is, and I'd certainly love to tell you more stories, but I think I've used up time. May I ask a quick question? Absolutely. Could you please describe what exactly a milkweed plant is? Okay. <laughs> a milkweed plant I think most of you are familiar with, are the beautiful pods that form with the silk in the fall. It's the you know, there are about 17,500 different kinds of butterflies. Each one needs a specific plant to lay its eggs on. Otherwise, its larva won't develop. So happens monarchs, our most popular and favorite butterfly, lays its her eggs on milkweed plants because it contains a poison that the caterpillar ingests and when it emerges as an adult butterfly, it has that poison in, in its system and makes it immune to most predators. So milkweed is vital. Now what happens, <clears throat> one of the reasons for the decline of the monarchs is um, in the center of this country, GMO corn and plants. 
It's so sprayed with Roundup, we have just made a dead zone in the middle of our country. We don't want to be a dead zone in the town of Olive. Um, and we're just killing everything. Everything can be in balance. We can have it on the website. We'll have pictures of milkweed. And if you want milkweed seeds, I have them. Ask me. <laughs> we'll plant them. And we plant community gardens or school gardens, individual gardens. Let's save our planet. Well, what a delicious way to do it, my garden. Right. Marilyn, I'll tell you, you definitely have enthusiasm and passion for your, for your cause. <laughs> and as someone who's been a gardener for over 50 years, I, uh, I, I don't I, I concur with the insecticides and the suicides. Not only for that reason, but the obvious others. I am going to, do you mind if I take the mic back? And we'll, um, did, did you leave a copy of the resolution there? Or yes, I did. Or you wanting us to consider? Yes, I did. Oh, I'm well, sorry. We'll copies to each of the. Uh, I'll, I'll make copies and get it to the town board at this point.